much. In today's video, we will talk about the top 10 Harry Potter movie questions that were answered in the books. Why does the defense teacher always change? Harry Potter franchise 2001 to 2011 Audiences are likely to note that the personnel at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry changes frequently. At least in the case of one specific position, the defense against the dark arts instructor. Every year that Harry Potter attends the school, a new person is assigned to the position. They don't remain for long either. Professors have died, developed amnesia, been exposed as imposters, and more. He who must not be named is at the root of this phenomenon. Voldemort once applied for the position, as Dumbledore tells Harry in the Half-Blood Prince book. The Dark Lord cursed the job after Dumbledore refused to give it to him. However, if we're being honest, the vast majority of them deserve to be fired. How did Harry know Lupin and Tonks had a son? Part 2 of Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows 2011 In movies, it's the supporting characters who receive the short end of the stick. Harry utilizes one of the titular Deathly Hallows to communicate with his departed loved ones during the final battle. One of the departed souls is his former opponent, Remus Lupin, the dark arts professor. He discusses Lupin having a son during their talk. However, in part one, this knowledge regarding his fatherhood is only briefly mentioned and never completely addressed. In the seventh book, Lupin asks Harry to be his son's godfather in a scene. However, there is only one deleted scene in the eighth film, in which the former professor chats to Tonks about his son while Harry is not present. Why is Harry allowed to go to Hogsmeade? Harry Potter Franchise 2001-2011 Hogwarts students are permitted to visit the nearby village of Hogsmeade for weekend vacations beginning in their third year. They will, however, require parental or guardian consent. Because he turned his aunt into a human balloon, Harry's family refuses to sign off on his field outings. As a result, he must enter Hogsmeade through secret passages while wearing his invisibility cloak. In later films though, Harry has no trouble visiting the village in the traditional manner. According to the books, Harry's godfather, Sirius Black, signed the permission document that the boy who lived required. It's strange that the filmmakers didn't just say something in a couple of lines of speech to clarify this. How can Fred and George afford to open a shop? Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince 2009 The Weasleys aren't exactly wealthy wizards. They may live in one of the world's coolest houses, but they're still poor by magical standards. As a result, the fact that Fred and George managed to open a joke shop on Diagon Alley in the sixth film certainly startled a few people. But where did they get such great wizarding land? The winner of the event received a financial reward, which was not mentioned in Goblet of Fire. Harry gave the prizes to Fred and George after inheriting a large sum of money. If Harry hadn't reached the cup that fateful night, their blossoming business would not have been conceivable. Why couldn't Harry see Thestrals earlier? Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix 2007 Since he was a child, Harry Potter has been haunted by death. That's why the Thestrals in the fifth film perplexed audiences. Harry should have seen these monsters sooner because they can only be seen by persons who have witnessed someone die. When his mother died, 
He was in the room and saw Professor Quirrell turn to dust right in front of his eyes. On the page. However, these occurrences were depicted in a different way. Voldemort murdered his mother when he was sleeping in his cot. Before Quirrell died, Harry also passed out. While you could argue that he should have been able to see them following Cedric's untimely death, the books helped to explain why he couldn't. How did Dumbledore find the first two Horcruxes? Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince 2009 Dumbledore informs Harry in the sixth film that Voldemort possesses many Horcruxes. These heinous objects held portions of the evil lord's soul and allowed him to avoid death. However, the film never goes into detail on how Dumbledore discovered the ring and locket Horcruxes, or why Voldemort chose those objects in particular. Both things have ties to the evil lord's family. According to the text, the ring was discovered by Dumbledore at a residence that belonged to a relative of Voldemort. The headmaster discovered a grotto that the evil wizard used to visit after analyzing the Dark Lord's life. These minor clues explain how Dumbledore was able to track down two of Voldemort's most valuable assets. How did Barty Crouch Jr. escape Azkaban? Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire 2005 One of the most shocking revelations in Goblet of Fire is that Barty Crouch Jr. has been impersonating a dark arts professor the entire time. We witnessed a memory of him being sent to the notorious wizarding prison, Azkaban, by his father before this announcement. The film, on the other hand, never explains how Crouch Jr. managed to escape. His father transported his dying wife to Azkaban, according to the novel. She was later replaced by Barty Crouch Jr. Barty Crouch Jr. was imprisoned and controlled by his father for years, while Mrs. Crouch died while disguised in prison. The films also leave out the fact that the Voldemort follower later received the Dementor's kiss. It's possible that, knowing his soul being taken out, was too much for viewers. How did Voldemort's followers find the trio? Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 2010 One would expect that the three seasoned young heroes would be better at hiding from Death Eaters and Voldemort's other henchmen. The trio on the other hand, is frequently discovered by the antagonists in the first of the final two flicks. These occurrences, however, aren't only due to ill luck. Ron states in the book that you know who has a taboo spell on his name. The Dark Lord explains that Harry and the other rebels aren't afraid to mention Voldemort's name. As a result, anyone who says his moniker out loud will quickly alert Voldemort and his followers to their location. Harry's boldness turned out to be his undoing. Where did the two-way mirror come from? Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 and Part 2, 2010 to 2011. In the two Deathly Hallows films, Harry discovers a shard of a mirror that allows him to communicate with others across large distances. Because it leads to the protagonist's rescue from Malfoy Manor, this object becomes a major storyline element. In the movies, however, we never see Harry receiving the mirror. The finished film simply states that it was Sirius's. Those who have read Order of the Phoenix will recall that Sirius gave Harry the mirror so that they could communicate more freely. To be fair, the lack of a mirror in the early films explains why the young hero didn't try to confirm that his godfather had been kidnapped by Voldemort when he was in his fifth year. The lack of a mirror could have actually aided the plot. Who 
are the Marauders? Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban 2004 Harry first encounters the Marauders map in the third film. Mooney, Wormtail, Padfoot, and Prongs collaborated on this mystical paper. However, the films didn't go into great detail about these groups' identities. The Marauders are James Potter, Remus Lupin, Sirius Black, and Peter Pettigrew, despite the fact that their link is never established on screen. Unfortunately, the neglect to investigate their identities results in a number of bizarre story twists. Harry insists that, because his map codename was Prongs, the person who conjures a stag Patronus must be his father. Sirius is also known as Padfoot, according to The Boy Who Lived. The filmmakers certainly succeeded in causing storyline confusion by not defining the Marauders. Did we miss anything? Please tell us in the comment section below.